Hello and welcome to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. My name is Deborah and I'm your instructor on this course and I'm a Microsoft Office Specialist and TAB Certified IT Trainer with a specialism in Microsoft products and I've been using Microsoft Project for a long time along with the rest of the wider Microsoft Office suite. And in fact, I'd say it's probably getting on for about 20 years now that I've been using this product and I've used many, many different versions of Microsoft Project over that time. I've used Microsoft Project to manage projects from large to small, from a value of a few thousand pounds or dollars to euros or multi-billion pound projects and programs for both government organizations and public sector organizations. So over time, I found out quite a bit about the use of Microsoft Project, and I'm hoping to impart a lot of knowledge to you during this course. In this introductory section, I want to cover some very important points before we get started. So please bear with me for a few minutes while I talk about, first of all, assumptions I'm making on this course. Now, first of all, I'm going to assume that your basic knowledge of Microsoft Project extends to cover just about everything that's covered on our basic Microsoft Project 2019 course. And if you do look at the course on the simonsaysit.com site, you'll see the list of topics that's covered, and I'm going to assume that you pretty much know all of that. Now, if there are topics on that list that you're not familiar with, I suggest you cover those first. I'll also assume that to some extent, you've got a reasonable amount of experience in applying those topics or applying the knowledge that you will have gained and that it isn't all theoretical because really you need to have used a lot of those topics to have a good grounding before you cover this advanced course. Now you may well have used an earlier version of Microsoft Project and maybe you're wondering whether a good solid knowledge in that earlier version is good enough. Now, if your knowledge is in project 2016 or 2013 and even 2010, and particularly if you've got a good sound practical experience of applying that knowledge, you'll probably find that it's good enough because in my fundamental topics, Microsoft Project 2010, 2013 and 2016 and 2019 are pretty equivalent really. There have been some changes, but they have been confined to specific areas, and you can probably pick up what you need in terms of those changes as we go along. For example, one of the largest areas of change has been in reporting, and I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on this advanced course talking about reporting. So hopefully with a little bit of help, maybe from our basic course, you should be able to fill in any gaps in your knowledge. The next question is that every time you look at Microsoft Project on Microsoft.com, there seem to be more project related pieces of software. Which piece of software is this course about? Well, let's jump into products and pricing. You'll see here when you go onto the project page, you have two tabs, cloud based solutions and on premise solutions. So if you are an Office 365 subscriber, you would in general go for the cloud based solution. Now, this course that we're doing is Project 2019, which is an on premise solution or a one time purchase solution. So these are the three pieces of software that are available to you. Project Standard, Project Professional and Project Server. And you can see underneath there all of the features of each of those. So that will help you make the selection as to which piece of software you want to buy. The next thing I want to point out is that throughout this course, I'm going to be using keyboard and mouse. So mouse mode rather than touch mode. Now, if you are going through this course on a tablet device and you want to turn on touch mode, that's absolutely fine. Personally, I find Microsoft Project a bit awkward to maneuver around using touch mode, so I prefer to use the keyboard and mouse. But remember, if you do want to turn on touch mode, you can click the drop down here and you can select touch from that drop down. And when I click it, what it will do is you'll just see that these icons get spaced a little further apart, which will allow for your finger when you're using a touch device. But as I said, I'm going to stick with keyboard and mouse throughout the duration of this course. The final point I'd like to make is that although I'm based in the UK, throughout this course, my default locale will be US and my default currency will be the US dollar. Also, I will be providing some course files and I'm also setting some exercises and the majority of those will be based on, for example, US currency. So if you want to stick with US, that's fine as well. So that's it in this section. In the next section, I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure of the course and the material that is supplied with the course. And then after that, we'll be able to get started with Project 2019 Advanced. 
That's the end of this section. Please join me in the next one.